The EASA regulations have been delayed until the end of the year. The UK government announced that we're also leaving EASA. So why did I study for the A2CFC? Geeksvana is your drone channel. Hey everyone, welcome to Geeksvana. Today I'm going to be talking about the new A2CFC certificate, why I took it and give you a look at the course itself. Before we get into it, I wanted to explain that this video is labelled as hashtag ad. The kind people over at UAV Hub provided the course to me, which I very much thank them for. They were, however, very insistent that I present my honest thoughts on the course to you, so you will hear my warts and all review. I just wanted to be clear and open with you all. From previous videos on the subject, I know it is a course which interests a good number of you, so I thought it would add some value to put my thoughts on the record. In today's video, we will look briefly at the regulatory background, what the A2CFC certificate is and what it will allow you to do with your drone. And then we'll take a look at the course content. We're trying the new YouTube chapter system for this video, so you can skip ahead back and forwards to different sections which might interest you. Before we start, Geeksvana is a channel focused on drones. This can be from the drones we fly as hobbyists all the way through to drones launched into space. Here you will find drone news, manufacturer leaks, fascinating interviews, and some fun content as well as some regular live streams. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell to get the latest drone news first. So first up, a little background and thoughts on the changing regulatory environment. The new EASA regulations are now due to come into effect in the UK from December 2020, delayed due to the existing world crisis from its original implementation date of July 2020. Grant Shapps, the Transport Secretary, has confirmed in an interview that the UK will be leaving EASA from the end of 2020. Despite this, we are expecting to implement the regulations from EASA through the CAA's CAP 1789 which is well underway to being developed into a workable document. The regulations are coming and the CAA A2 C of C will have some genuine value moving forward. To find out more about the new EU wide regulations, you can find a link to our playlist on the EASA regulations in the description. You can find out more about the airspace types, overall drone classes, etc. in that playlist. Today, I'm going to keep focused on the A2 category to keep things straightforward. Next up, what is the A2 C of C and what will it allow me and my drone to do? This can be split into two categories during the initial transition period and after. The A2 CFC or A2 Certificate of Competency to give it its full title is a new drone course qualification that's being introduced from December 2020 to allow you to fly certain aircraft within a new set of regulatory categories regardless of whether you are flying as a hobbyist or commercially. You see, under the new EASA regulations, unlike the existing system incorporating the PFCO, the focus is on the risk involved rather than if you're flying for money. The A2 airspace subcategory will allow you to fly closer to people if you hold an A2 certificate of competency in the UK and are flying a C2 class of drone. Initially, there will be a transitional period after the new rules come in to allow manufacturers time to get the new range of drones onto the market. These drones will be classed from C0 to C4 and will allow you to fly in different airspaces depending on your level of qualification. Again, for more on the system generally, see the link in the description to our playlist. The transitional period currently runs up to July 2022, but as the implementation has been postponed, this could easily be extended to provide the two full years originally intended. The existing drones you own and fly will be classed as legacy aircraft. Without the A2 CFC, you will need to keep far from people, which means 150 meters away from residential, industrial, and recreational areas, and a minimum of 50 meters from uninvolved people. This will also be the case for all legacy aircraft after the transitional period. However, if you hold the A2 certificate of competency, and if your legacy aircraft is between 250 grams and 500 grams, such as the DJI Mavic Mini, you'll be able to fly close to people as long as you do not overfly them. Exciting. For legacy drones between 500 grams and two kilograms, so for instance, the new Mavic Air 2, the A2 CFC holders will be able to fly with a separation distance of 50 meters from uninvolved people. All this within the originally previously off-bounds congested areas. So this gives an immediate benefit to the A2 CFC and a way of flying for a decent amount of time with your existing drone. But what happens after the transitional period? Well, then you'll need both the A2 certificate of competency and a C2 class drone to be able to fly in the A2 air. Space. However, you will then be able to fly down to 30 meters of uninvolved people flying in normal mode, or down to just 5 meters if the aircraft has been switched to a low speed mode, something C2 class drones will have to have. C2 class aircraft need to have a takeoff mass of less than 4 kilograms, be safely made as determined by EU manufacturers.
manufacturer standards and it also needs noise limitations, a remote ID and a form of geo awareness. As mentioned before it will need a low speed mode which limits the aircraft to 3 meters a second approximately 6.7 miles per hour. So with an A2 certificate of competency you will be able to fly your Mavic Mini close to uninvolved people without overflying them and the Mavic Air 2 will get you to 50 meters of uninvolved people both within what us hobbyists currently find as the off-limit congested areas. Clearly to me there is a great value in studying for the A2 certificate of competency both in terms of being able to fly my existing drones in exciting and new ways as well as the C2 aircraft after the transitional period ends. The ability to fly in these airspaces for money is again interesting to me but my main focus is on flying for hobbyist reasons and for my channel. So up next let's talk about the course, my experience of it and the company providing the course UAV Hub. Again please be aware that the kind people at UAV Hub provided this course to me although at the insistence I only provide my honest and open opinion. Regular viewers of Geeks Varna channel will know I have worked on a few collaborative efforts with Matt Williams from the YouTube channel Mr MPW. UAV Hub, the provider of the course is one of Matt's businesses so there's the connection. Due to the existing crisis the course which was intended to include classroom study at one of UAV Hub's training locations actually took place completely online including the examination. My congratulations goes to the team at UAV Hub who managed to put together an online only course which felt like it was intended that way from the start. It was a seamless experience. Let's take a look at the online training portal first. After signing in you're greeted with a student dashboard. This provides access to the existing courses you are enrolled for as well as providing details of other courses should you decide to go beyond that level of qualification. As you can see on my screen my dashboard shows the A2 CFC revision for examination, the UAV hub resource library and the A2 certificate of competency course itself. I found this an easy system to navigate. Let's take a look at the course itself for an example of what you will find. The overview gives you the details of the course curriculum which is split into five distinct sections with a sixth discussing the examination itself. The subject matter covered was very interesting. I've been flying drones as a hobbyist for several years and there was a lot of subjects covered which provided clarity to me on a range of situations and a decent amount of new information too. Once completed the course gave me a lot more confidence as a hobby flyer even before the regulations allowing me to fly under the new certificate have come in. Let's take a quick look at how the online course itself works. As you can see the course sections are broken down into video learning hosted by Matt Williams, him off the Mr MPW YouTube channel. After you complete each video you mark it as complete and move on to the next video or information panel. You can replay the course as many times as you like ensuring that you take in as much information as needed. This isn't a course ran just to get you a pass mark, uh, a lot of the information broken down in the videos is important and put across in a way which actually leaves you with a deeper knowledge of the hobby. Once you've completed the online portion of the course you will then attend the classroom based section. As previously explained this was also online for my course due to the social distancing and lockdown regulations in place at the time. The course took place over a video conferencing system which displayed both the tutor and a feed of the slides required to explain the information. This section of the course was extremely useful as it delved into each section of the online learning already completed ensuring my knowledge of the material wasn't simply sponged from videos and text. Hearing the tutor speak about the sections really helped me from a learning perspective. There was also an opportunity to place questions and comments into a messaging screen which could then be answered either by the tutor or other UAV hub professionals in the chat just to do so. After completion of the online course you then need to book in your examination with UAV hub. You can do this at other points but I decided to book it in after the course was completed in case I felt more time was needed with the material. To help you UAV hub place a revision for examination section on your student dashboard. This provides a basis of key areas to ensure you have fully committed and understood to provide the best possible chance of passing your upcoming examination. Next up is the examination. This was again carried out remotely via specialist software which provides both security and protects the integrity of the examination itself. I won't discuss too many aspects of it to ensure this is maintained but as with my experience of the course itself the examination was completed with efficiency and professionalism. There's plenty of time for me to answer each question and you're able to come back at the end if there are any questions you are unsure about. This of course helps for anyone who gets anxiety towards sitting exams as the pressure is not on quick fire answers and more on thought out considered responses. How did I do I hear you ask? 
Well, you'll have to wait for our second video on the A2CFC, which will be released on the Geeks Varna channel very soon. Fingers crossed. If I passed, what percentage mark do you think I gained? Let me know in the comments. In summary, I found the A2CFC course from UAV Hub to be an enriching experience. I would actually recommend every hobbyist drone flyer takes this type of course, not only because of the future airspace it will open up, but because of the knowledge and confidence it gave me as a hobbyist flyer. At the moment, the course is offered from UAV Hub for £249. This is a lot of money to invest for most hobbyists, but if you compare it to the cost of previous qualifications, such as the PFCO or higher level qualifications under the EASA system, it is, in my opinion, great value for what it offers. This is both in terms of knowledge gained and the confidence that it gives you as well as the fact that you will have a CAA issued certificate giving you access to some exciting flying opportunities. The qualification has a five-year renewal period which again provides decent value. The course was certainly aimed at the right audience in my opinion with both commercial and recreational uses for the A2CFC discussed. I am not sure how long the virtual class setup will continue but there were obvious advantages to not requiring travel etc for the classroom portion. So if you do not live within a reasonable traveling distance of a UAV training center this might be an ideal time to take the course. In my opinion, the course should remain an online only course as it has proven to be so successfully put together uh, and it will allow people from every corner of the UK to access it easily. My experience of UAV Hub has been one which has grown over time. Firstly, chatting with the team about potentially taking my PFCO and then, of course, working with Matt Williams of Mr. MPW on collaborative videos. Throughout this course, the booking, the admin, the online learning, and all the way through to the examination, I found them to be a friendly and professional group who are genuinely passionate about getting the knowledge across. There is a link in the description which will take you to their website for more details. Again, I want to stress here that UAV Hub kindly provided the course to me so I could tell my audience about the experience. However, there are no affiliate links, etc., and they went out of their way to insist I provide an honest and open review of the course. If you have any other questions on the A2CFC course or anything else, please do let me know in the comments or send me an email to sean at geeksvarna.com. Okay, that's it for today's video. Remember to look out for the next one on the A2CFC where I will reveal whether I passed the exam. Fingers crossed. Also, if I did pass, let me know in the comments your prediction for the pass percentage. See you next time. Please remember to like and subscribe.